Folklore. Every culture has them. Passed down from generation to generation, these stories were once told in an attempt to explain the mysterious and unknown. Today, folklore gives us a window to our past and allows us to understand how people lived. In Iwate Prefecture, there is a village known for its curious legends, and I've come here today to find out how these legends remain an integral part of the place today. My name is Michelle, and you're watching Tokyo Pass 3. This is Tono. to be here. When I first saw photo of this place, I actually thought, what in the Blair Witch Project is this? But this is actually a love shrine. Legends say that there was once a lake here that granted people's wishes. The lake can no longer be found, but the practice of wish-making still remains. People come here and take a red piece of cloth, write a wish on it, and then tie it onto one of the tree branches or ropes. But wait, this doesn't come without a challenge. It is said that for your wish to come true, you have to tie the cloth using only your left hand. It took me a good while before I could do it, but I managed to. Unedori-sama is in the middle of nowhere, but it doesn't give off a scary vibe at all. If anything, the place is calming, and the red strips of cloth that adorn the shrine are mesmerizing. It's a place full of wishes, a place brimming with hope. Our next destination also revolves around love, but this time it's between a girl and apparently her horse. The story goes like this. There was once a poor girl who loved her horse so much that they eventually became husband and wife. When the father found out, he was so angry that he killed the horse by hanging it from a mulberry tree. Grief-stricken, the girl cried clinging to the horse's head, which again disgusted the father, so he chopped its head off. Upon doing so, the horse's head flew to the sky, taking the girl with him. Since then, the girl and the horse became worshipped as a deity called Oshirasama, often represented as a pair of mulberry sticks, clothed in garment. These sticks are often placed in an altar inside the home and are worshipped as the god or gods of Seri culture. In Denshoen, a historical park in Tono, visitors can find 1,000 Oshira-sama dolls. Guests can take a piece of cloth, write a prayer or a wish, and then put it on one of the mulberry sticks. It's a stunning sight and as fascinating as the story behind it. Last destination revolves around a water goblin that remains prominent in popular culture even today, the kappa. Kappa are often depicted as human-like in form, but with green skin and a saucer on its head that must always be filled with water. They are often described as mischievous, 
For example, they lure horses into the water to drown, and according to the legends of Tono, they even bed women and get them pregnant. In Tono, there is a pool called Kappaguchi, where the kappa are said to be frequently seen. Those who wish to try and catch one can take a stick with a cucumber hanging on its end, the kappa's favorite food. As for me, I tried my luck but I didn't catch any. And maybe that's for the best? I mean, immaculate conception with a kappa? Really not my thing. And that's it for today's video. I had so much fun here in Tono. Honestly, there are so many beautiful places in Japan, but I personally have a pension for the obscure and somewhat bizarre. And in the next video, I will be going to a place where something delicious flies. So if you're curious about that, do watch the next video and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. This is Majal for Tokyo Pass 3. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!